Hey, what's up, guys? Got a great question from our friend John, and he's been listening to our show for a couple months, he says, and he, uh, he wants to know how to develop better habits. He's been trying a few different things to uh, improve his health and to improve his life and his energy levels and things like that. And um, he says that he tries things for a little while and then goes off of them. And he tries to um, wake up in the morning early to get a routine going and then he gets off of it. And he tries to introduce uh, things into his diet, but then he goes off of them. And so this is something that I get a lot. And this is something that uh, I, I feel like comes up a lot in terms of emails and things like that. And so John wants to know if, um, if I had any ideas. So I'm going to make a little video about it and I can share it with you guys. And I figured if we all can sort of pool together and help John out, um, create some better habits. Uh, in themselves. So comment below and let me know what you do to develop a habit that sticks. I'll share with you a couple ideas that I do and John I hope this helps you out um, and I hope that it's uh, helpful to you. So here are some of the things that I do in terms of developing habits. Is I try not to get too attached to the habit itself and so I realize that uh, one of the biggest things you want to do is, is change your habits and there's even been books written about it, right? change your habits, change your life, things like that. And, you know, it's very important to have healthy habits. It's very important to develop these anchors within your daily life that you do, not because you have to do, but because you want to do, right? And so, uh, more than the habit itself is changing your attachment to the habit and then changing your idea about why you're implementing that habit. So. Um, the habit itself is really, really important, but you don't want to become too attached to that habit. So, for example, what I do is, like, here's a perfect example. If I go out somewhere, um, I'm, I'm a big gym guy. I love working out in the gym. And so if I go on a two-week vacation or three-week trip somewhere and I come back and I want to get back into the habit of working out, uh, let's say I get back off a 12-hour flight from Australia, which we have family down in Australia, so I, I go there quite often. And let's say I get back from a 12-hour flight. Um, I may get back to California around 10 o'clock in the morning. And what I'll do is I'll go to the gym that day. But I won't go and really do any weights. I'll, I'll lift really light, really, really light. Or I'll go on the treadmill just to get my heart going, get my body moving in a rhythm that's not being influenced by the bouncing of the plane and things like that. So I get my blood going and breathing fresh air and I'll get it, so I'll just go in there and the reason for going to the gym is not the weight I'm lifting or the amount that I'm, you know, reps that I'm doing. It's simply just to get that habit started, right? Just to get going in that direction because a lot of people come back home from a trip, they say, oh, they get back on a Tuesday and they say, oh, I'll get back to the gym next Monday. Next Monday comes, they don't go to the gym, so you see this bad habit. Uh, the other thing is not being too attached to the habit itself, right? So you don't want to be um, to the extent that your ideas and opinions about the habit become so strong that if you break the habit, you are very upset with yourself and you beat yourself up and you're angry and mad and you say, I can't do this and blah, blah, blah. And you create this whole story about why you invested everything into doing this one thing every single day and you couldn't do it and therefore you're horrible and all that. So you want to detach yourself from the story and the habit. Um, so, and, and then the other idea is with the habit is that you want to make it something where it's fun to do and you know that when you do the habit, um, you're going to do it. So I would invite you to look at something fun that you love to do and creating that as a habit first. So for me, I mean, I love working out. I love going to the gym. Um, more, you know, it's not a, a huge love, but I, you know, I do enjoy it. So, you know, doing that as a habit is very, very easy because it's, uh, it's something that I know that I'll stick with and know that I'll do. But, for example, if you give yourself a, a desire that you want to start going to the gym because you want to add 20 pounds of muscle to your body frame uh, in 30 days or whatever, or, I don't know, six months or a year, um, and you, 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 you tell yourself you're going to get up in the morning and, and go do that. And then, you know, then one morning comes, you stay out too late one night, and then you wake up too late the next morning, and you're too tired to go to the gym, right? Um, and so if you are setting up potential habits that you know that you're not going to keep, you're subconsciously lying to yourself because you know you're not going to keep those habits, right? 
And so when you lie to yourself like that, even though you don't think you're doing it itself, but you sort of know you're doing it because you know you're not going to do that. You know you're not going to go to the gym every day for 30 days in a row, right? So you know you're sort of lying to yourself. And when you're lying to yourself, you know you're not trusting yourself. And you know you're not um, really invested in the true joy that comes from having that habit. So what I would suggest is to find something very, very small, like drink um, 64 ounces of water every single day. Make that happen. Easy, right? You could do that. Anyone could do that. Easy, easy. Do that. And once you do that, you know that you, you don't lie to yourself, right? When you say that you're going to do something, you do it. You don't mess around. You don't give excuses. You don't subconsciously create goals you'll never do that, that require habits that you'll never do because you know that there's an out because... Um, you know that uh, the goal is too lofty to begin with, right? So set goals that are very small and set goals that are very easily attainable so that they require small habits. They don't require huge life-changing habits where you're going to need to overturn and overhaul your entire life. Create habits that you know you can win at. It's like, um, you know, if you're the strongest guy and you want to do arm wrestling, um, you know, and you pick on all the smaller guys because you know you're going to win, right? Set habits where you know you're going to win. So once you say that you're going to get up every morning at 7 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning go to the gym for an hour and then uh, you, you say you're going to do that for 30 days and you do it, something happens to your subconscious. Something happens to your psyche and to your, uh, to your mental state, right? Because you know now that when you set goals, you do them. You want, when you set a habit in motion, you do them. And then you feel good because not only did you get up every day and endure the discipline of doing that thing, whatever it is you want to do every day, but you also reaped the benefits of doing the thing itself as well, right? So you feel better, you have more energy, you're going to bed earlier, you're getting a full night's sleep, and you feel good about yourself on a mental, spiritual level, but also on a physical level too, because the endorphins that are created from the exercise itself are serving you along with the underlying emotional, spiritual side of developing that habit. And then once you get really good at these, you can start with something else and start with really small habits, easily winnable, easily attainable habits, and then you can start implementing those in your life. And then you become a person of character. You become a person who, when they say they're going to do things, they do them. And you mean it. And you know you're going to do it. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so once you sort of lock that in, you could start stacking these habits on top of each other and start applying them to other parts of your life, right? So you can start applying them to bigger and grander things. But with each thing, you want to start small with easily winnable habits that get you to a destination um, that may be a, a larger in scale, right? So um, those are some ideas about setting yourself up to win. Starting small. If you want to meditate every day and get into the habit of meditation, don't start out doing 15 minutes. Start out doing less than five minutes or five minutes at the minimum. Do that for a month, right? And tell yourself you're not going to miss that for a month. Get into the habit. Then you're going to feel good about doing that. Then you're going to feel good from doing the meditation itself. Then you're going to want to bump that up to 10 minutes. And then if you get up to 10 minutes, you start getting to the point where for the next 30 days, days uh, 30 to 60, you're doing 10 minutes. But then even if you don't get to 10 minutes, you're, maybe you're doing um, 7 minutes, right? At least you're doing more than 5, right? So you set yourself up, you start stacking these things up on top of one another so that it, it sets you up for a winning success. So that's sort of my ideas about habits and I hope they helped you and um, hopefully you can start being kind and gentle to yourself not attaching yourself to the habits themselves so that you can be very kind and gentle with yourself, right? And not attach yourself to the habit. If you miss a day, don't worry about it. Start the next day. There is no yesterday. There's no tomorrow. There's only right now. So you can always, um, you know, get into the mindset of living in the here and now and being kind and gentle, soft and allowing and being uh, grateful and thankful for everything in your life and you can start building these disciplines and these habits. Pretty soon you're doing 100 things a day but you love all 100 of them and they all serve you. So 
Um, and then all of a sudden you're living a completely different life and you wonder, how the hell did I even get here? How did I get to this place um, after five years of stacking these habits on one on top of one another? So, yeah, those are some of my ideas. I hope they help you. Uh, if they do, comment below. Let me know what you think about your habits, how you're able to uh, achieve goals and create habits in your life. And I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for the question. If you enjoy this type of stuff, don't forget to go over to ExtremeHealthRadio.com where we have over 385 shows to date on natural healing, uh, alternative nutrition, self-empowerment, all kinds of cool stuff, uh, extremehealthradio.com. And if you would like to join our newsletter list, which I highly suggest you do, we've got lots of cool stuff on there uh, that comes out twice a week. You can do so by texting the word get healthy, um, all one word, get healthy to 33444. And you can sign up, confirm your email address. I'll send you an awesome audio program about how I overcame my food addictions, which was uh, quite a monumental task, uh, I must say. And I used one particular technique in a very unique way to do that. And now I'm not addicted to pizza, muffins, cookies, cookies, chocolate chip cookies used to be my, my downfall. So um, I share with you how I did that in a very powerful way. Um, I also send you a great ebook called Lessons from the Miracle Doctors for. Uh, for free. It sells for 20 bucks on Amazon, but I'll send it to you right away if you sign up. Um, and you'll stay up to date with all of our shows. So it's a good thing, and there's thousands of people on there, and you get to join our community. So thank you for listening. I hope this uh, video and these ideas served you in some way. And if they have, please share this with your friends, and um, I'll catch you guys on the next video.